What's going on guys, Bel Air here. We are on board with Roas, one of the twins who makes up the Team Falcons juggernaut that currently exists within the Amina region. I had somebody in the comments say, would love to see a video about the twins. And I said, who are you, my boss? And then I made the video because I wanna make people happy. So here we are with Roas, the defensive powerhouse that makes up uh, one half of the twins. And the reason that I chose this game is because it is a seven game series, which has been a real rarity for Team Falcons over the course of this season. Within their home region, Amina, they've only played in two uh, seven game series. Well, that's not true. Series that were seven game series that actually went the full seven games uh, twice. One of them was against Roll One, which uh, that roster no longer exists, and the other is this one on our screen right now. I chose Game Six because uh, it was a super exciting game, as uh, Twisted Minds are going to get us on the board here with a pretty high quality 50 in the box. And uh, not only is it a, a, a great game, but also it goes overtime. And uh, I have a penchant for yapping, so I figured why not give myself a little extra time and show you this. Game 7 honestly was a snooze fest. I think only two players got over 200 points. I did an exercise to prepare for this video. That's right, guys. I'm doing a little homework on the side. I have a full-time job, but they'll be okay. Do they not know that there's Rocket League on right now? Not right now, but you catch my drift. The homework that I did was going through and counting how many series went uh, each each possible iteration of score. So 3-0, 3-2, 3-1, 0-3, you get the point. And I did this because when I think about Falcons, I often think they're never tested within their home region. They're kind of the Boston Celtics of the uh, MENA region where we know they're incredibly good, uh, but they have had a really easy uh boston has had a really easy road to the playoffs so it's kind of like man once they get to the finals like are they going to be prepared for an actual war when they've just kind of ran over everybody and i feel similarly but stronger um, about falcons just because all three of the players on this team have seen their fair share of international play but with that said i think it is important to uh, stay tested and put yourself in difficult situations so that when you're in those situations they are not new to you but enough about that let me tell you a little bit about my findings instead of running you through every single number on this list let me just say in a lot of ways things are the same the big change has been in the Swiss stages in Major 2, uh, when you compare it to Major 1, where they absolutely destroyed everyone in Swiss, and I can't believe that that wasn't a goal to put them up 2-0, uh, this Major 2 Swiss stages uh, have been a little bit more challenging for Team Falcons, which honestly I think is a good thing. Uh, you don't love to see, oh my goodness, Mawson, what a save to keep clears out on that reset. You don't love to see them get 0-3'd by Bravado for their only loss in their home region of the season, but maybe losses like that build character, light a little bit of a fire underneath their, underneath their butts, if you will. And outside of that, things have really kind of stayed the same. I do think it is cool that they've had three 3-2s three in Swiss uh, this time around when previously they ran over everybody. So. All of that to say, let me land the plane, uh, Team Falcons have got tested a little bit more in Major 2, which I think is good for them as they head into international play. Now, a little bit of historical context about these players um, at the international, excuse me, at the international stage. TRK, one of the veterans of the region, has certainly had his fair share of Lan uh, matchups. He's been to seven S tier events and he's had four top eights of those. One grand finals, and that was from the uh, spring major of last season, where Team Falcons uh, had the game up because they came from upper bracket, so they had to lose two in a row. And if you 
um, have been a, a fan of the channel and have been catching all the videos. Uh, in the most recent video we did with Jane Apps, we talked about a Team Queso run that was absolutely unbelievable from lowers. Well, now in, when they went up against Falcons in the Spring Major, they were called Moist Esports, but that same Rise Joyo Vatira team. And uh, they had a lower bracket run of themselves where they were just melting everybody they went up against. But Team Falcons, you know, this was, we had never seen an emerging region, uh, a non-EU NA region win a major. And holy cow, here was Team Falcons in a grand finals with two bites at the apple. And the first one went seven, incredibly close series overall. And then after that, I, I think Falcons just ran out of gas. They got 0 4 they got swept in that reset, and uh, it was not very close. The offense totally fell apart. They only scored three goals, and two of them were from O'Khaled. And if you know anything about old Falcons, when it was TRK, Ahmad, and Khaled, uh, Khaled is not the uh, goal scorer. So for him to score two of their three uh, tells you a little bit about what happened to the Falcons' offense there. But with that being said, TRK has been to a Grand Finals before. Now, the Twins are much younger, much more inexperienced, but even in their own right, they've already been to three S-tier events. They've had one uh, top four, and that was from uh, spring uh, last season. I think I said spring last season for Falcons as well. That was uh, two seasons back. But spring last season, uh, Rule 1, who was the Twins, and then Mawson, who is currently on the other team in this game, uh, went up against Vitality. And they got 0 4 in the semifinals, but it was, I'm telling you, if you watched it, you remember. Uh, if you didn't watch it, please, uh, I recommend at least going and watching game three. It was the closest 0 4, I, th I think, in, uh, in in land history, at least that I can recall. Uh, a 12 minute overtime. Um, three of the four games were overtimes. Uh, those first three games were all one goal games as well, just incredibly tightly contested. Uh, and they ended up losing to uh, no shame and losing to a Zen led Vitality who ended up winning the event uh, and furthermore the uh, the world championship. So a good opponent to lose to. All of that to say this team definitely has the experience that you look for uh, to contend at the top. And now the fact that they've had a little bit more of a tightly contested major two in their home region uh, makes me a little more excited about um, the level of competition that they will be bringing to this major. I think it is important that uh, this team is comprised of uh, quite possibly the three most uh, talented players in the region. If you want to make a case for Nalbo, uh, be my guest. I think that he um, could do a little bit more um, be a little more impactful on the defensive end and furthermore I think he could do a little bit better to uh, include his teammates he reminds me of like early career Luka Doncic where it's just me 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 and uh, you know he had complete control of the offense and if his teammates scored off of an assist it was because uh, he got double teamed and you know, he had to get rid of the ball, so easy assist. I think Naupo can definitely develop and grow there, uh, but the Twins have already got it. Kaliers is uh, an overwhelmingly impactful striker. Uh, Rawas has uh, shown his prowess as a defensive player, and uh, TRK is uh, was who I thought was the best player on uh, those old Falcons teams alongside Ahmad and Khaled. So this team definitely has the chops. I think that they are... Of any of the non-NAEU teams, the one with the uh, highest ability to win this major two, and um, I really think that uh, it, there's small things around the edges that make me even more excited. Like this is a non-travel uh, event for for this team, as opposed to having to come over and deal with an overwhelming amount of jet lag. The fact that this event is in London, which is closer to uh, home base than. Uh, an event in like a Dallas or California or wherever, um, I think is, is another small thing around the edges that makes me more excited for this team. We're four minutes into an overtime. Let's see if we can tease out some of the stuff that Rawas is doing in this game. And let's see what they're doing in this kind of nervy overtime. Are they, wow, he was very confident to just let 
uh, that double attempt to go by uh, Ahmad. But let's see if uh, if he's trying to set himself up, set his teammates up, how he's rotating with or without boost, uh, whether or not he's just punting the ball or controlling it. Let's let's uh, let's dig in a little bit here. So going to wait midfield alongside Kalir's. Going to create some space here. You already have two on the ball. You don't want to overcommit too far. Going to go for the control here. Get one up the corner. A little bit of boost to play with, and is just looking to. I think he was looking to create kind of a downward 50 there for his teammates. Excellent bump to get one off of the back wall and steal a corner boost, uh, but it does not matter. We're going to have transition out. That was a, a touch that he wanted to get a little bit more of a skim on to get it going the other direction, but it ended up not biting them in the butt that time. See how he realizes he has time here. That ball is going to go past him. Still is not going to panic. He's going to let Mawson jump, play one around to Kalir's. Uh, after not getting the touch that he wanted, that was... Uh, a very patient and controlled approach by Ruas, uh, who immediately makes me eat my words by bumping into TRK. Ends up not really costing him too much there. All right, we're just kind of letting this ball set. Everybody's resetting. Ruas is gonna free jump. I thought that he might uh, look to go back into uh, a, a defensive stance there, but he kind of waited middle. That must have been something that they were calming about having him pre-jump. Ended up not working out and wasting a ton of boost, but hey, I think it's good to uh, keep the opponent honest and hit him with some different stuff every once in a while. Trusted the double there by Ahmad, so uh, fake challenge just to force that double and then went. Big challenge there to get up and meet Mawson. And look at that, that handoff from the Twins is exactly what you want to see. Incredibly well read by SMW to get up to it. Both teams are uh, are okay with keeping control and just seeing what they can create. That's something that Rawas especially is looking to generate, opportunities where he's just kind of holding on to possession, uh, letting Twisted Minds get set. I think they want to keep this game from kind of ping-ponging back and forth. Um, and speeding up and letting something silly go in because I think they feel pretty good about uh, how they've been uh, over the course of this. Wow, that was unbelievable. Let's watch this again. So how does this set up? So Roas trying to go all the way back, finally finds a boost all the way back there. That one is going to get absolutely yeeted out, and Kalir's is going to make a play on the ball, tries to get a setup for TRK, uh, and just... Look at this. I'm not going to go back too many times, but this ball pops perfectly to SMW and where he is. Ruas gets a touch on it, but it's just not enough. And let's go back and watch this from SMW's point of view if we can. I think he's in this red car here. Just pops perfectly to him. He's going to launch that, gets up really quick. Ruas gets the skim too. And that's just an excellent read there by SMW. Um, so this, uh, this was a very exciting game. It was a loss, which I typically do not show. Um, but I do think we got a good look at Rawas and his defensive prowess. I think that that, uh, last one, while he, uh, ended up being in a poor position, I think that's one of those where it's just kind of, you tip your cap to, uh, the well position and timing and RNG, if you will, of SMW on that play. What do you guys think of, uh, this team Falcons roster? Um, do you feel that they are going to be a team who is actually going to be uh, contending at this London major? Or do you think that uh, NA and EU, there's just too much depth um, and we won't really see it? I would love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, take it easy.